So I'll go ahead and name some benefits of the X-Curve. But well, this is definitely one of them. While I'm cutting out a finger joint box, take the dogs for a nice walk. Hey, and welcome to McGinn's Woodshop. Today, I'm going to show you a little review on the Inventables X-Curve. Uh, they sent it to me, so a little disclaimer, they sent it to me for free. And what they wanted me to do is do a review, and they're hoping I'll make some projects with it as well, which I'm definitely going to do. Uh, I do have a few things about the software that could be a little different um, to make things a little easier. Uh, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with the actual system and I'm looking forward to using it more and more. Number one question, if I were to actually pay for this system, uh, would I actually buy it? The answer is yes. If I had the capital, I'd pay for this. Uh, comparing to other CNC systems uh, that are equivalent, um, we're talking about a couple thousand dollar price jump, and the difference for me, i definitely start with this. It paid itself off already, and I've only owned it for four months, and a lot of that was a learning curve. So, uh, and that, that's something else actually, is there is a learning curve to this. Uh, putting it together is not hard. The instructions on the uh, internet are pretty good. I wish that they would separate them into two printable PDFs, uh, or at least two completely separate web pages. Um, instead of trying to inject the 500 mil build in the middle because it is there is differences and it gets confusing. I've seen it get confusing to a few people. Um, other than a few issues, there, they had an issue with their spindle. Uh, they quickly corrected that. Their, their customer support is excellent, top notch. Like you call, you get answers. Um, it was hard to find answers on deep technical things. Uh, but I wouldn't expect their tech, their tech support to be able to rewrite code and build things that way. Uh, I, would, I would like to work with the technical team in certain aspects of different things, um, but that's a, whole, that's a whole other geek thing. The perspective I'm trying to give in this video is if I was out trying to buy or looking to buy a CNC machine, say an X-Carve was on my list, what would I want to see? Well, I'd want to see what it can do um, and what kind of ways to set it up to make it work best and the most efficient ways and just give me some insight into exactly what it is that I'm buying and the capabilities that I'd be getting. So that's what I'm going to show you with some examples because that's to me the best way to do it. I made a lot of different things and I'm going to show you all sorts of examples. I'm going to show you it cutting, uh, an example of it cutting and doing different things. Also, setup and deployment of, uh, of stock. Uh, as well, we'll hit into the software. Okay, so this is one of my first signs. I did make the first cut. Great guy, hanging out a lot. Um, I want to try... Uh, fonts and take a picture and put it in with it as well. Now I also did one for the bearded builder uh, but he's taken his sign home so I'm going to show this one. This is basically a half inch quarter piece of cherry plywood and uh, I've carved down, I forget how deep, but just deep enough to expose the white underneath, uh, the white plies underneath. And the attempt here was to cut the sign out and uh, you know make a really nice sign but as you can see with the material I've learned that plywood with small little things left in the centers chip off and break real easy and that's just because the plies come apart that has nothing to do with anything but the material itself so in doing something like this if I wanted to do something with this much accuracy I wouldn't be using this kind of material I'd use something else so after making signs I wanted to go ahead and test precision what I did was I found a picture of a cribbage board online and then learned how to convert it into an SVG file. Using Inkscape, I've created lots of little templates like this and things. I would like to go a little farther with something like this, uh, but this is just a test piece. This here is cedar, and i got to say, it cut really nice. I also did it after getting a good one. I tried making it smaller and put it on a piece of hardwood which I had all glued up um, just as a, a piece for something like this. So that made another crib board which turned out really nice 
um, the holes and everything align perfectly. And again, uh, it turned out nice. You can see the precision of along the seam of the actual uh, joint. And, and so you can see like the lines are perfectly straight and everything is perfectly set in here. I also cut out on the bottom space for two cards and that there was a project on Inventable. So I wanted to practice downloading a project from Inventable's webpage and running it and then making my own and putting it on the other side. So that was this test which gave me great results. I then went along into wanting to do inlays. Another piece of this wood that I had all glued up and ready to go. Um, I took some purple heart, I cut out the letters first, and then I did an outline of the letters and cut the letters out in purple heart. So I cut the, the groove, the space out for the letters on the board, and then I put a piece of purple heart in and cut outside the lines, and it gave me these letters, which then fit perfectly. And this is all hardwood. This is maple, purple heart, walnut, and oak, and paduk. So what I did, in order to make the letters go over top of the paduk, or the, the, the shield, was I cut the shield out first, I put the shield in there, and then I cut the lettering out, and I put the lettering in. So that's, that's, that turned out really nice, and that shows the precision of it. I got into making practical cases, and this here is, is a pen case. Uh, basically, I wanted to learn how to make a lidded box on the X-Carb, where they fit together. And also, independent of thickness of wood. So you can put any thickness of wood, up to I think half an inch, or three quarters anyway, and make yourself a pen box. Again, that's on the Inventables webpage, so if you want to see those, you can go there. I have links down below. And you can print them out into any kind of wood. And if you make pens, it makes a great way to give the gift of a pen along with a nice little box to carry it in. We've got into also a lot of fun little things where we just type out names and um, on a piece of quarter inch plywood stock crap. Um, you can see other things were cut on this before. I used it as an underpiece. And basically, what this is, is you just put this over top of a t-shirt or something, or a piece of wood, or a tool, and you spray the name, spray paint, and the name stays on the product. It actually turns out pretty good, and it's a lot of fun. We can make fun t-shirts real quick. We can put signs on tools, and all sorts of things. So that's a great little fun feature to have. Now I mentioned I wanted precision, and I'm also using different materials. Here's one thing, um, this here was the most difficult thing that I had to design and the limitation is actually, from what I can tell, is easel. Uh, so, but basically I used an engraving bit to engrave the lettering and the lines, which you can see improved 100% here. This is, looks exactly and matches up exactly to a ruler. Uh, my problem was, though, was that I was unable to get all the little ticks on my ruler, across my ruler. The other problem was it took forever to cut out. Now, if you de look down below, I have a link to Bob Claggett's I Like to Make Stuff video. He has a perfect video on describing speeds and how to improve them uh, cutting aluminum. So if you want to check that out, go down below or click the link on your screen now. Once I got the precision and everything down, I started just making designs to sell because this machine has the ability to produce constant perfect cuts. So what I'm able to do is I can make these name sign puzzles and sell them a lot cheaper than most would sell them because the X-Carve cuts them out, I sand them down, paint them, and clean them up and get them ready to go. Now, this has led me into another venture though. I don't want to get into painting too much. Uh, so what I will be doing is just selling template files for makers so they can make things from my cutouts. So I have a couple more 
things that I've made, and then we'll move on to um, the actual software. So this here is a cube, finger jointed, all the way around, 360, all the way around. I love this feature. This is a plug-in in Inkscape, uh, and it's enabled me to just quick print off finger joint box. I fit them together, glue them together, and then leave the lid unglued so I can just use it as a lid. And there you have it. This is just some half inch oak plywood and uh, turned out really nice. I love those. They're a lot of fun. Last but not least is um, a car that I made. This is a little kid's toy. It rolls. It's fun for the kid. You can hold it by here. It's for a toddler. Because it's a rattle. It's a rattle. The wheels rattle back and forth. And also some corn on the inside rattles. If you'd like to see this project and how it's done and how you can make your own, check the link below. And uh, there you go. <clears throat> I happen to put this piece in upside down, so I'm just going to show you the quick and versatility of this this clamping system. So first, I'll just take off my pressure clamp, and I'll take my cam clamp off on the side, and I'll loosen up over up here. So now, with this free, I'm just going to turn it, orientate it so that it cuts the best it can, as flat as it can be. And we're going to get a nice clean cut. So I just wanted to switch. You can see I had a little, little knot here in this corner, and part of the car would have been into that knot. So I'm just going to put it into a clean spot. And again, I'm just going to move this back down. I got a metal spacer for a final. Okay, once we get her all in like that, just go ahead and give it a little tighten with the cam clamp. Now it's good this way, it won't even move. I guess I got a slight move if I push hard, uh, but that's what this is for. So we fit that in nice and tight. I'm only tightening this to halfway because it's really tight as it is. It was a tight fit right from the start. So I don't want to put too much pressure on the side bar here. Uh, it's just enough to hold it in place. I don't need to go all crazy here. Wow! So now when I tighten this clamp down, it's going to bend this and put that pressure on here, which applies the pressure here. There's lots of good instruction out there uh, for easel. So I'm going to show you some basic differences of the new ones. If you want to see a good introduction to easel, I'd recommend going to Bob Claggett's I Like to Make Stuff uh, YouTube channel. The name of the actual uh, YouTube video is called How to Use Easel Free and C Software. I'll put a link in the show notes if you want to have a quick link reference. Uh, so what I'll show you here, like I said, I'm going to show you some basic differences. First of all, your different main options are in the top right here. You can choose your material size and change the size dimensions right here, your thickness as well. Uh, bit size and type material that you're using can be chosen here. The material chosen is just basically presets for how fast your cut settings are going to go, which are over here. I'll use custom and set it to what I start to feel comfortable with different materials. If you've never used those materials, just keep it with recommended and then work your way up and find what works for you. Uh, don't go too fast, too quick. I've pushed this up in specific circumstances right now to 35 and I know I can go a little bit higher and 0 0.05 deep and I think I can go a little deeper but I haven't tested those yet. I'm just working with um, what I'm comfortable, comfortable with and then I'll upgrade it. So with that said, I can also change my bit size here, um, either in inches or millimeters, and there's some quick options to click, just a quick grab, it's quarter inch, one eighth inch, one sixteen, one thirty two. The next section I want to show you is show tool path. And with show tool path, I'm going to use this design because as I said earlier in my file, the only problem I, or in, in the video, is the only problem I had was with that particular ruler design and I felt like it was easel and I want to show you why. 
In this case here, you can see here the design is completely in here. I've edited this in Inkscape, uh, designed it, sized it, everything, imported it as individual files. A few different things I had to learn uh, was to make the objects separate uh, because it couldn't handle easel couldn't handle having each of these as individual lines. It it created. Uh, many many I think 700 some lines or objects and easel just couldn't it just ran so slow that I couldn't do anything with it so I brought it back in Inkscape and put it into single uh, file or single objects which made Inkscape run a lot nicer now here you can see it it all came in everything looks good here I'm gonna go over to our preview and zoom in a little bit here Oops. And if we show toolpath, you should you'll see that the actual lines don't even show up in easel, even though they are there, and easel accepts them as an object, as you can see. And there's a depth set to it. Even if I set the depth to 0 0.05, which is way too much. you won't see the path show up. So I run into this problem and I'm unsure where to go from this point. So this is the limitations is the number of objects in easel and it seems that also uh, it even by going around and making it single uh, objects it's still not enough for easel to bring it all in or I'm not sure what it is. The other important thing to look at is your apps area and in here you have different options of things like inlay generator, the polygon generator, gear generator, you can make different things uh, and have a lot of fun and they keep adding different apps in here uh, to use. So just keep an eye on this area and uh, you never know what you'll find here. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you get something out of it if you're looking to get yourself an X-Carve or an Inventables product uh, that it gives you some insight as to how it works and what it does. You can also look at their other product called Carvey if you're looking for a smaller, more desktop type of um, package build that's kind of already there for you. You can check Carvey out. Uh, I haven't seen it yet so I can't say anything about it but it looks pretty cool. The last thing I want to say about this is since I've upgraded my spindle to the DWP611, uh, major night and day difference in cut quality, speed, and I'm um, just, <laughs> I'm even happier. <laughs> so, awesome. Thank you very much, Inventables. Uh, friggin', I, I can't even say thank you enough. You, you really opened a lot of doors for me. Really appreciate uh, thinking about me and uh, sending this to me for me to review. I hope to return that favor for you guys uh, by giving some uh, insight videos and how-to videos in how to use X-Curve and how to get things roll in a little a little more efficiently and, and better. Anyway everybody, stay tuned. There'll be lots more on the X curve coming up. Um, it's a lovely toy that I'm having a great time with and I'm looking forward to sharing my experiences with you guys.